We're going to look at this number 16, where we're going to be simplifying right here. I do have a few log properties written down here that are not in the book. They're only in the video lectures. And the two that could be useful for us here are already in a box, but I just put another little circle box thing around them. So let's go ahead and look at our questions here. We're going to start at the top. There is no parentheses here. And what that usually means is everything to the right of the function. The function is right here. So everything to the right of that is in parentheses by default. So this is really the order of operations that's happening. And all we're going to do is take this exponent, bring it down as a coefficient. So we have that times log 3 of 3. Now from here, there's really nothing more you can do to simplify that. We don't know anything about x, but log 3 of 3, we can simplify that. There's a few ways to do it. You could use the definition of a log. You can also come over here and look at the properties of a log. And what we have, we actually could have used this and saved even some more time. <clears throat> In our case, we have log 3 of 3. I'll even write a first power. And basically this all cancels out and you just get the exponent, which will be one in our case. So log three of three is just one. You also could have just used that uh, property at the very, very beginning right here. Instead of bringing the power down, you could have just said this is negative six X plus two. All right, so that's part A. Now we're gonna look at part B. Part B is 8 to the log base 8 of 1 plus 4q. And on here, we're going to use a different identity. This is the identity we're going to use. The only difference is our base is 8. And what happens here? is basically the exponential cancels the log and you're just left with what's inside of it. And if you're wondering, well, how do these work? They're all explained in the uh, lecture video right here. So this all reduces down to log base uh, eight cancels the eight exponential. And that's just one plus four Q. All right, part C, log base 27, the 729 to the K. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take the exponent out and it comes out as a coefficient. Depending on your actual numbers, Sometimes it's more obvious that one of these is a power of the other. Uh, for us in this particular situation, uh, 729 is going to be a power of 3. Is that right? Yeah, it should be a power of 3 and 27 is a power of 3. Uh, I think 729 might even be 27 squared. But your numbers might be a bit worse. So let's look at how to solve this if you can't uh, use that property. So there's a change of base. Well, if you have a nice calculator, you can actually just compute the number of this log right here. But if you don't have a fancy calculator, you need to use change of base. Change of base says log A of B is equal to log B over log A. And what happens when you don't see a base written in here? That is an implicit base 10. I'm going to erase these 10s out of here. but even without a fancy calculator, you should be able to compute log with base 10. If not, you can use natural base, which is just ln. So I'm gonna write this with the log base 10 of 729 over log base 10 of 27. And now you can use most any calculator and figure out what these logs are. And then it's just gonna be k times that number. 
All right, so that's part C. Now we're about to look at part D. It looks a little bit more complicated. All right, so part D is gonna be 11 to the fifth log base 11 of six minus six log base 11 of five. Just to make sure we wrote that down right. Yes, all right. Well, I see log base 11, or 11 exponential, 11 base, 11 base. We can't use the properties yet because we have two different logs subtracted. But subtraction of logs means division inside the log. We do need to deal with these coefficients first. What happens with coefficients? They become exponents. So you have log base 11 of six to the fifth minus log 11 of five to the sixth. Now we're subtracting two logs and this is the same as dividing on the outside or dividing on the inside. So our numerator is six to the fifth, denominator is five to the sixth. And now finally we can use the cancellation property on the right side of this. And the only difference is our base is 11 now. So those are gonna cancel out and it's gonna just leave us with the input. So this all cancels and we're left with six to the fifth over five to the sixth. Uh, you can't really simplify this anymore because these all have base six in the top, base five in the bottom. Uh, so you can either leave your answer like this or you can use a calculator and turn it into some ugly fraction where those will be pretty big numbers. Uh, but six to the fifth over five to the sixth should work just like that.